Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you how to use frames inside of Photoshop Elements. In this case, we're going to be doing dog frames. Now I'll take this back to the beginning. Let's just get rid of this untitled picture right here. I'm not going to save anything. There we go. Now I have two pictures open in here. This dog picture and that one down there, a couple of cute pictures. We'll get back to those later. And we'll start off with making a new file in here. File, new, blank file. I'll set this to the default Photoshop Elements size. Choose OK. And that's a 4 by 6 at 300 pixels per inch. There we go. And then Control 0 to fit screen on that. Now you find your frames over here in the graphics, bottom right hand side. And they're up here. Normally this is going to say backgrounds like that. And the second option down here is frames. We'll start off with the background. And I'll just scroll through here and find some kind of interesting background. The one I chose was down quite a ways. Where's the bottom down here? See if I can find that one again. There we go. It's way down here. Now, a lot of these have these blue triangles. That means that these haven't been downloaded yet from online. The way the backgrounds work and also the frames is that all of these images are up on Adobe's server. They're not installed in your copy of Photoshop Elements when you first download it. That's just to save space on your hard drive. And then if you see one that you like, let's just do this one right here. Double click on that. It then downloads that and puts it into your image. And then it's been downloaded onto your computer, and it's now available for any time in the future. If you want a different background, just come down and click on a different background like that. It then replaces that background. Now these come in as a replacement for the existing background. So if you're opening up a picture like this, this only has just the one background. Well, you would do it on a picture like this where you have your image already. Go up here to Background, right-click, Duplicate Layer, choose OK. And now here is your picture layer. And then this is the one that will be changed for your backgrounds. So it's actually pretty easy to do. Just make sure you always make a duplicate. And I always say that anyway, whenever you're working with an image and you only have your image on the background, always make a duplicate of that and then work on your duplicate for changing your image. Okay, so go back over here to this one again. If you want to have more than one background to try a few out, same trick. Let's just right click on this, duplicate that layer, choose OK. I'll then hide that one. Let's now go back over here to our graphics. Let's choose this background right here. Back over to Layers. We now have both of those in, so I can try which one I like better just by going back and forth. So if you want to keep the background in your project, just make it a duplicate like that, and then duplicates will all be staying in your project. Right-click, Duplicate Layer, and there is that duplicate. So pretty easy to do that. I have step-by-step -step written instructions on how to use all of these different options up in here in my HTG Photo Coach, and I'll put a link for that in the description. Okay, let's now bring a frame in here. Back over to graphics. And let's change this up here to frames. There we go. Now there are several frames in here that are what I'd call dog friendly. And let's see if we can spot those for you here. The first one is this one right there. It has kind of a diagonal on it. If you hover your mouse over for a minute, you'll get a little pop-up like that. It says kennel. Click on that. Now notice we're not seeing it in here. That's because it's coming in behind that layer up here it comes in above the background. I'll just take this background, copy and drag up beneath all that stuff. There we go. Now these frames come in as groups of layers. You can see right here, here's our layer group. Click on that arrow, you can see that. If there's text, you'll have it in here. In this case, the text just tells you to drag or drop a photo in there. Your frame is the actual picture right here. And the mask is that area. If I hide the frame, the mask is that piece. And that's where the picture goes into. Now to put a picture in here, if you have your picture already open in the photo bin, just grab it and drag it up like that, let go. It just gets placed into that mask and there's your image. Real easy to do that. You can add more text up here, put the dog's name up here if you want to, whatever you like, grab our type tool. I'll go here at the top of this layer and then click in here, this will put our text above that. Now if you're in 2024 and newer, you will automatically get this placement text. If not, you'll just get an insertion tool I'll just type in a name here, double click on that, and I'll come down here where it says size, and I'll drag it to the left until that fits, and then position that, and there we go, there's our name for the dog right there. Pretty easy to do, as you can see. Okay, and that's just on a new text layer. The only thing I noticed as I was looking at this is that I actually dragged this background copy into that frame set. I didn't want that. I'll drag it down just a little bit further. There we go. Notice that indent here. These are indented. They're inside of this group. So if you're moving your layers around, make sure you're not going inside the group. It's easy to see, just collapse your group. And if it's inside the group, just take it and then drag it out like I did down here. 
Now, because this group has three things in it, if I want to get rid of this frame, I have to get rid of all three things. So click on the trash can. It's going to ask you to delete the group only or the group and contents. I want to get rid of group and contents and the whole thing goes away. Okay, let's go see what other frames we have that are good for dog pictures. Back to our graphics. So that was one right down here. It's down a long ways, maybe about two thirds of the way down the list. Let's go up a little ways and we have some more up here. And they're right in here. We have three of them. There's this one. This is dog one, dog two, and dog three. I'll do dog one first. Click on that. And this was still online, so I had to download that. That's all it took. Same exact trick over here to your photo bin, take your dog image, drag it over and drop it in, and it comes into your dog picture. There we go. And you can then move it around a little bit. Depends upon how big the image is. See so if I go too far, I get off the image. So you can make your image larger or smaller just by grabbing this little slider control right here. And this as I click on that, I can actually see where the borders are for that picture. You can rotate your image using these two buttons, and you can choose a different image if you want to. Click on this button right here, and then choose a different picture. Let's say I'll do that one right there, choose place. There we go, different picture. So pretty easy to do that. I'll just leave this one here, just hide that. Let's do another one, graphics. Do this dog house over here, dog two, click on that. Again, it downloads it. There we go. It's too large for the picture. Notice though how it kept my image, that was nice. I wanna change the size of this. So let's go back over here to our layers and we're on the dog frame here. You can see we have control handles kind of inside there. If I grab those control handles, it's going to change the size of everything. Even though it looks like the control handles are working with just the image, it actually is changing the whole size of the whole graphic. So you can do that pretty easily right there. Hit the check mark for OK. And there's the dog. OK, let's just hide all of this stuff. Let's now do one more of these layers. Come down to graphics. And that's this one here. Dog 3, click on that. This is kind of dog bone shape. Same trick. Let's go back over to our Photo bin, I'll grab this dog, drag it over like that. Just drop it in. Now you're doing that drag and drop. Let me just back up one step. When you do that, don't click over here because it's gonna bring this image up. That's not what you want. You wanna just go down here and then just drag like that. So don't click and then drag, just drag all in one motion. We have the wrong shadow down below there. Let's go back to our layers. There's our folder in here. There it says shadow, that's the shadow one. We wanna get rid of that one. And we need a new shadow on this, so that's our frame right here. There's the frame. Grab the magic wand tool. And let's click into these. It may take a few clicks to get everything selected. Just kind of work your way around. Let's go around all the dog bones in here. Until we get them all selected. There we go. Just make a new layer. I'll come down here to this text layer. Put a new layer right there. Put it at the bottom to begin with. And let's grab that paintbrush. It's on black. Let's hide this frame. Actually, I'll hide the whole thing. There we go. Just do it right here. And I'm painting inside of this or hit that paint bucket and fill it with paint. Either way, whatever you happen to like, I tend to go with the paintbrush more than the paint bucket just out of habit, but they both work out just fine. And I'll go ahead and we'll paint around this, back down this side. There we go. Control D to deselect. And this will become our drop shadow. If you want to, you can go in and paint in all those little spots. It's really up to you. I'll just make my brush size smaller here. And then just going through and painting those out. It's a little bit of a fine touch in here. You don't actually have to do that. It will still work without that. Control zero to fit screen. Bring our frame layers back up again. There we are. Back into this layer. Back to our move tool. And let's pull that shadow down just a little bit. I'll use my arrow keys to position that where I want it. Kind of like that. And then let's go up to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. That looks real nice. And then bring the opacity down. There we go. And there's a good drop shadow that actually matches the shapes of those bones in there. And that's really my only complaint with using all these different frames is that sometimes the shadows don't match the frame properly. So you have to do a few more steps to get a good shadow on these. But I think it's a lot of fun to create these different frames for your projects. And again, those four frames that I found are all very nice for dog images. Sometimes it's easier to work with written instructions than it is just to watch a video. So I have instructions for this video, for this project, inside my HTG Photo Coach program for Photoshop Elements. And I also in there cover all about how to use the frames, all about how to use the backgrounds, all the stuff, actually everything inside of 
Photoshop Elements is covered in the Photo Coach program. It's kind of like a super help system on steroids. It really tells you everything you need to know. And I put a lot of stuff in there. I'm constantly updating that program, putting new stuff into it each month. So it's never going to be getting out of data. It's never going to be getting old. There's always something fresh in there. And I'll put the link for that in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Give me a like. And also, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. Just click on that subscribe button and hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any videos in the future. And I'll see you next time.